Hey everyone, this is another rapid demo of Superbase and this time it is June 2021 and we've got quite a long list of things to actually uh, tell you about so I'm just going to focus on the key things that I think will be interesting then I'll leave it up to you to read the blog post. There really are a lot of things so go check out our blog post. I'll leave a link in the description below. Um, so before I get into what we did ship, let me tell you something about what we're going to ship at the end of July. Um, if you've been in the Superbase community for a while, you'll know that in March we did a launch week um, and that's where we shipped one thing every day for a week. And in fact, on Friday we shipped three things. Now, the community really liked this and actually so did the team and we just like shipping things. So we decided we're going to do this again and we're going to do it on July 26th. So um, get hyped, get excited, um, let us know what you want to see and we'll try make sure we ship as much as we can, uh, as much of the things that uh, everyone's asking for uh, within that week. Okay. So with that bit of housekeeping done, let's focus on what we did ship. Um, we, uh, first of all, uh, if you've been following the tech news, then you'll know that Vercel just shipped a uh, integration platform and Superbase is on this. So it's quite cool. You can uh, deploy a Superbase database directly from their dashboard. You can also uh, deploy it with one click deploy buttons. You can uh, add the integration from your Vercel account. Uh, it's very cool. And there are very few database providers for Vercel. I, I noticed on their database integrations, there aren't too many. Um, so it's nice if you want to get started and, and use Superbase from uh, your Vercel account, uh, then yeah. Um, please do try it out and let us know what you think. Also, a massive congrats to Vercel because they have just raised a, a whopper round, $102 million at a billion dollar valuation. So very cool, uh, congrats to them. Um, okay, so the next thing is the, um, yeah, we're so, so we've released some new guides. And what are the guides? Well, you'll see this new section at the top of uh, our documentation. The guides, we're just getting started on them, but these are very, um, they're going to guide you through a very specific set of things. So if you want to learn uh, one particular thing about, say, databases or auth, we're going to guide you through how to achieve that. Um, so let me point out one of them. For example, full text search. Now, full text search is actually like having Google inside your database. It's essentially like having a search engine uh, inside your database. You can actually index all of the text inside your Postgres text columns or, or Varchar columns, or um, you can create indexes, and then you can search directly on them uh, using SQL, but also because we uh, wrap just Postgres, you can use your JavaScript. Uh, that's not one. Here is one, SQL, 2TS vector, 2TS query. Um, you can use your JavaScript um, well, our JavaScript libraries within your JavaScript app to actually uh, search text. So here's how you do it. You just put dot text search on the column that you want to search and then the search string that you want to use. This is very cool. It just does some sort of kind of fuzzy matching on these well, tokens or lexemes as they're called in, in Postgres. And so you'll return results which are very similar but not exact matches. So check out that guide. Um, the other one that I do want to point out, uh, uh, well, we've got a bunch of extension guides which you can read through um, and we'll actually fill out this section a lot. So this will probably become the main bulk of our documentation over time. But the other one that uh, people have been asking for because it's very complicated is setting up their OAuth providers. Now this is setting up the OAuth on the um, provider side. So for example, Apple is extremely complicated uh, and we've set up this guide for stepping you through step by step how to actually set up within Apple itself um, the all the app and then how to get your callback URLs from Superbase, how to put them into the Apple app. Um, yeah, everything that you need, everything including generating secrets, it requires Ruby scripts and everything. So um, if you were getting stuck, uh, check out these guides and do let us know or do help us improve them if you're stepping through them and they're not clear. Um, they're all open source, so please do make a pull request if you can improve them. So while I'm on the topic of OAuth, we have released a new OAuth provider and that is Discord. 
um, which is very cool, especially if you're building communities and uh, you're trying to add logins around your Discord community, then this is quite cool. You can uh, now just drop in your Discord uh, app. Unfortunately, we don't yet have an OWASP guide for um, the Discord app, but it'll be coming soon, no worries. And uh, then it's as simple as literally just putting the snippet of code inside your uh, here. For example, you put this sign in and instead of GitHub, you can put Discord here. And that's how simple it is to get Discord started on your application. Okay, so with all the auth done, there is one more thing on the docs that I want to point out. Um, or a couple of things to do with storage. So the storage improvements this month are we have um, now the ability to not just upload, uh, if I can find the upload, but also to uh, upsert. So if you make this one true, then you can upsert a file, and if it exists, then it'll just overwrite it. Very handy, just a nice convenience feature. That was actually due to the community uh, doing a pull request, so thank you very much. Um, and we'll give a shout out to the person in our blog uh, who made that pull request. And then the second big thing for our storage is public buckets. So this is also very cool. If you uh, know in the past, um, to actually download a file, you would have to create a signed URL and then or get a public URL. So now what we've done is created the ability to actually set a whole bucket. Let's say I wanted to share all these cats photos with my friends, then I can actually set this bucket to public. Once you do this, it'll make everything inside this bucket public and then it'll put a big um, badge here saying that it's a public bucket and you can share these share these uh, these URLs with your friends and family uh, at the library and the pub and uh, hopefully they'll get a lot of enjoyment of all the memes that you're sharing. Okay, and then one last thing that I want to highlight is the, uh, it's a bit of a small feature, but critical for people who have been using Superbase very heavily, and that is server restarts. Um, now, this is just the very start of our sort of observability story and allowing you to manage the infra, the underlying infra of Superbase. But what this means is that if you overload your database, you write some stray for loop, you don't know how to fix it, you can literally just trigger this restart um, on your server. That should, it's like restarting your computer. Uh, it's a bit of a, um, you know, brute force uh, fix, but it's one that seems to solve things for most people. And actually a lot of people were asking for this. So it's nice to get started, but in the future, we'll be adding graphs, uh, adding observability graphs, so that you know what is going wrong with your Postgres database. and you can hopefully debug it and stop it without doing a full server restart. So check that out, play with it, be careful with the restart. Of course, it means that there will be downtime if you're restarting your own server. Um, but yeah, it's a nice to have. Okay, so that's all for this month. Uh, enjoy and we'll see you again next month.